calculation of capillary rise in a tube, capturing the capillary effect. Hey, Professor, Duck and me got a question about surface tension. Yeah, I told you before, it's Duck and I, not yeah. Duck and oh, me. Oh, sorry, Professor. Can you help Duck and I understand uh, no, capillary? No, in this case, it's Duck and me. Huh? Uh, never mind. What is your question? Well, Dick and me, we were wondering how to calculate the capillary rise in a tube. Yes, and why does the liquid rise to a certain height and then just stop? I'm confused, too. Why doesn't it keep on rising all the way up the tube? Well, the short answer is that surface tension force must be balanced by a gravity force. But I made a short video about this, and I can show it now. When a small diameter tube is inserted into the free surface of a liquid, the liquid inside typically rises above the surface level, forming a meniscus. Rise height h is a function of density, gravity, surface tension, tube radius, and contact angle phi. A defined contact or wetting angle here. It's the angle between the tangents to the liquid and solid surfaces at the point of contact. For a wetting fluid like water, phi is less than 90 degrees and the liquid rises. For a non-wetting fluid like mercury, Phi is greater than 90 degrees, and the liquid falls. Surface tension always acts tangent to the surface. And now we calculate the height as a function of the other variables. Surface tension acts circumferentially, so the total surface tension upward is sigma s times the circumference times cosine phi. W is the weight of the fluid. If we ignore the meniscus, W is rho g times the volume of the liquid inside here. That acts down. Since the liquid is stationary, Newton's law tells us that we can sum up the forces and set them to zero. Upward force must equal the downward force. And now we solve for h. h is 2 sigma s cosine phi over rho g r. We did this for a wetting fluid, but it also works for a non-wetting fluid. In that case, h would be negative. Let's demonstrate this equation experimentally. Since r is in the denominator, a smaller tube should yield a larger capillary rise for the same liquids. We see that this is true. The rise height is larger in the smaller diameter tube compared to the larger diameter tube. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. The diagrams with the force vectors really help me understand all this. But, sir, aren't you getting something for nothing when the liquid rises all by itself? Yeah, of course not. That would violate the second law. But you need to study advanced thermodynamics before you can fully comprehend all this. Okay, sir. Like they say, dudes, there's no free lunch. Yeah, speaking of lunch, <clears throat> Dick, you got any food for me? Uh... I mean, for I... Yeah, I'll never get through to these students. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.